Jack Survival and Survival Dispatch. I'm here with a friend and mentor of mine, Dave Holliday. We're going to talk about smoke bath or a smoke smudge. Okay. Uh, one of the things that's always intrigued me is, is eating a piece of meat that's been smoked. Well, what happened to that piece of meat and why did smoking it keep it from rotting? Why can you have something that hasn't really been cooked but has been smoked for so long that it no longer rots? What's going on? Well, if you've ever watched some of those sped up movies in the old days of how something molds or rots, is organisms are landing on stuff all the time and then they're creating colonies and then those colonies send messengers or little scouts down into whatever your apple or your piece of meat and they just start eating and and then they start pooping and that's the stinky part well on a human body the reason a dog can uh, can find you is we're constantly dropping off pieces of dead skin off the dry parts of our body but on the moist parts of our body like in our mouth in our armpits and in our crotch wherever we're sweating and not drying out there's little creatures that start eating the dead human flesh and then they start pooping out what they've consumed uh, then can't well what they can't digest or use they poop out and that and then there's creatures that start eating their poop and so you can uh, you know you can start thinking about that smell that you don't like like rotten cheese or, or you know like camels pooped in your mouth all night while you're snoring how would you call it trucker butt sweat yeah there <laughs> so so what that is is a bunch of dead human flesh that's now being eaten so it's not even rotting it's being eaten and pooped out and then it's the rotting poop that you smell so the yeasts are going to work eating and then killing each other and pooping each other out and eating the food and so they start these communities that start living on the next thing that's that's crapped out of the next group that dies so all of these things are dying in your armpit and it's rotting human flesh basically or rotting feces of the creatures that are eating human flesh and so that's a pretty bad story it, it makes some people gag you know uh, that smell doesn't have to be there and that's why I prefer smelling like at worst some bacon or some smoked meat a month after not taking a real soap and shampoo type bath in a hot tub you can smell really good if you're out for months if you'll at least get wet once in a while scrub things down with dry sand but occasionally just smudge yourself so thickly that the smoke starts sticking to all the moist parts of your body so if you really want to smell good get completely naked go jump in the creek and come back and just smoke yourself and that will literally kill all the organisms that eat human flesh and then you will never stink like rotten putrid meat or cheese you will smell after months of being out you'll walk into the public and people say oh you've been camping or wow were you guys eating bacon and so yeah some people don't like that smell on a person they think that means they're dirty it actually just means that they smell like smoked meat rather than rotten meat which do you prefer so what we're going to do is make a smudge fire and just show how you could clean okay here's a practical thing you've got somebody who's got a serious wound you've only got so much water you're out in the middle of a sahara like environment you got to save that water to drink but you got to work on their wound you can smudge your hands so much that they turn yellowish that means they've killed all the organisms all over them as much as you possibly can and then if you heat them up in that same fire in that camel dung fire you've actually heated them up to the point where they can't take the thermal shock of getting that hot and you've smoked the environment then your hands are ready to get in there and dig that bullet out or whatever as much it's as you they're sterilizing uh your hands to the point where as much as you possibly can without modern without modern products uh, but more practically I just like the smell of it I like using plants that have a lot of volatile oils that smell good like juniper and pine uh, uh, chaparral down in the lower deserts of, of Arizona and Mexico there's so many plants that are full rabbit brush is actually full of oils that will stick to your skin and make you smell pleasant sagebrush is one of the most exciting ones for people who who like that smell 
but you can make yourself not only smell good, you cannot just cover up the stink. You can kill the creatures that are causing the stink. And that's why you can go for a long time without a water bath and still not smell bad. So we're calling this a smoke bath. You wanna make a fire? Let's do it. I, I like to say dirt isn't dirty, it's just dust. Yeast poop is dirty. <laughs> yes. There's filth <laughs> yes. and then there's dirt. Yeah, there's like, dust, just dirt. Mind. Dirt brushes off. Yep. But that smell when you go, oh, what died in there? Yeah. That's what we're trying to kill. Out in the wilderness, the only filth we encounter most of the time is in our heads, <laughs> the way we think, the way we feel. We bring junk with us, but the, the land itself is much cleaner. In fact, this sand here is probably way safer than the inside of both of our mouths right now. Oh, I'm sure. Especially <clears throat> I even brush my teeth. our crotches and <laughs> armpits. And so uh, dirt isn't bad, but filth, that's like rotting, you know, that's like chicken bones under the bed, greasy, greasy, <laughs> don't clean your house for years with dead flies, you know. That's nasty. That's nasty. That's nasty. Cities are, are rotten, but, but uh, the wild's usually pretty clean compared to what, what we encounter in our, our, uh, our modern life. While you were chatting, I notched it. If you want okay. to hold it down, I'll start it and get a burning maybe. Okay. We got. We don't have a. Yeah, I, I'm just. I haven't burned okay. it in yet. That's kind of crunching. You got your ring on. Oh, it it uh, it, uh, it, got, it got it got split out. It I'll got try split out by uh, by Justin. Justin split that out. He stepped on it, or, or maybe he saved it from. Yeah, probably. It, it was Jake Hartner that, that saved that tool's life. Jake's a good man. He put that. He put that uh, string on there and took a broken stick and made it into something useful. I got a stone knife if it means anything to you, but if you want to show that modern knife off, you should. <laughs> I'm cool either way. <laughs> okay. I figure you use what you have, right? Well, you got, yeah. Everybody would use the good stuff if they had it. That's fair. I should have done Make sure we can see this right here. Your table's tilted back a little bit. I could fix it. Yeah, that'd be. If I shoot, shoot that under there. There you go. How's that? That's perfect. Okay, perfect's good enough for me. Oh, I smell it already. That's a good sign. It wasn't turning black. I was a little worried. Well, it might take some work because this has been this is it's been raining and flooding here every day for about a week. Everything and, is wet. And this was under the sand for since I saw you last. How many weeks ago was that? At least three, Kay. two or three. So this has been buried under the sand and has been flooded on for five days in a row. So and I pulled it out this morning. So it is soaking wet inside the wood. That's good to know. So <laughs> if, if you still fill up to this challenge. Let's do it. I'll start it and you can finish it off and okay. be the hero. Well, I don't even know. You're, you're claiming we're gonna be successful. I'm not sure about that. Well, it will be successful. Maybe it'll be with a lighter. Okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. This is a little damp too. I can feel it. That's all right though. I think you've ever even seen me do a bow or a hand drill before. Oh, I have. You don't even know if I can do it. I do know you can do it because <laughs> you, you saved our necks that one time when we were out in the snowstorm. I remember that. And, that was fun. And so I know. I think fun is relative. I, I, I saw your, I saw, well, it was. I saw your technique and knew that you were uh, moderately capable, capable. Capable, capable fire maker. Now, I'm going to improve our chances you if put a I can. Sand in it. No, I'm going to do something that a Navajo told me I'm supposed to do. Yeah. He said that fire comes from the center of the earth. So you should get your spark on top of something that came from the center of the earth. I like that. So he said a black basalt or black obsidian is the material you should use. And I'm going to take my hat off also because they say that helps also to take your shoes and your hat off. So I'm just going to go like this. Now, all I'm going to do for you is hold this. 
I'm not going to help much unless you just ask me to at the end. But I think you're going to get it on your well, own. We'll see. Get it warm again. That's about the only dry sand you're going to find. I know. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> that might work right Everything there. Everything is really wet right now. Oh, I don't want to. I can feel the break in the top of the spindle. Oh, is it, in, is it lengthening? Well, it's got a little bit of a bend to it. Okay. Let's see if we can get it warmed up real quick. You're getting smoke already. Yeah. I'm getting tired already. It's like I just started. You got this. All you got to do is 20 more times. <laughs> you usually tank out at like 19. Well, I'm just saying, usually there's a spark already going by now, but this is a wet day, so if you need to switch out, I don't think you do. I can tell you got it in you, especially because you're standing up. You got this. I think I got a spark already, actually. You got this going, yep. So keep going until you know, until you can see it. I don't think you do. I think if you stopped, it would stop smoking. So you tell me if you want to switch out. I'll next, switch. You ready? Okay, next time you go down, just hold this. Yeah, it's there. It's spitting them. Look at you doing it with one pass. Well, you make me look good, man, like you said. <laughs> But we're not smoking out of the bottom of that pile yet. We're not there yet, no. Uh -uh, we're not even close. We are. It's, we do have a coal. Okay. Give me about two more passes. <laughs> okay. Now, we got to tell a joke. You got a joke? Uh, what's brown and sticky? Okay. Uh, feces. A stick. Oh, hey. Thank you very much. <laughs> there we go. Okay, I'm gonna make a quick Apache match out of some dry cottonwood bark. Just nothing fancy. Surprising how exhausted you get when you haven't had a lot of sleep. Yeah. That's a beautiful little blade there. Really thin. That's some good Utah obsidian from over by Delta. Some of that snowflake stuff? No, it's, not, it's just near there. Yeah? I'm going to the wrong spot. All I ever find is the snowflake stuff. So, back in the BYU days, 70s and 60s, the reason we told people to tell a joke. So they wouldn't blow their coal apart? So they wouldn't get all feisty and in a hurry. That makes sense. Calm down and get your mind off of how worried you are that you're fire won't happen. This would have been flaming. It wasn't so wet. This is all water. It's really it's all water coming out of that thing. Really damp. Everything in the canyons are flooded. Once you get it ready, I bet I can blow on it once and make a flame. <laughs> Poof. Now you have to say fire, boo ha ha, boo ha. I don't, I'm not a member of that society. I'm not able to say that. I'm not one of the boo ha ha family. Boo ha ha family. They haven't sent me into that that initiated status yet.
So there are many types of good smudges in my part of the world. One of them is an introduced artemisia. It's a weed that makes uh, really mean kind of burrs later on in the year. But literally any kind of smoke will work. It just, it's nice to have pleasant smokes. Smokes that make you feel good when you smell them. So I'll put a little bit of this, this type of, of burrweed mugwort on there. That smells really good. But then uh, a common uh, Nevada and Utah, like Paiute, smudge for clearing spaces is uh, just plain old rabbit brush. To us, we call it plain old rabbit brush. To them, it was a lot of important things, and it is to me too. But I like it smell. It's kind of a sweet, happy smell. I call it pungent. It's just, it's intense, kind of like Carmex when you open the lid. And if you've got a lot of mosquitoes in the area, you bust this stuff loose, they just, they back right out. Like they don't want anything to be doing with the smoke. So I've uh, bathed in the creek a lot lately, s lately swam in a lot of uh, flash flood water lately, so it's kind of dirty water. But I haven't smudged for a while, and I've wanted to. But one way to get things really flowing is to unbutton the top button of your shirt, get your underpants or undershirt out, and you can see it coming right out <clears throat> under my chin. That's intense on your eyeballs. Well, then just take a big breath, step away, close it all off and keep it in there. You can do the same with your crotch. I'm not gonna demonstrate that today. Thank you. But if <laughs> I was really trying to stay clean, first thing I'd do is go get in the creek and get soaking wet. And then I would come back and smudge my whole body so that the smoke sticks to all of me. It likes to stick to wet surfaces. And by the time I'm dry, I've not only cleaned off my body good with scrubby sand and water, then my skin is fresh, defoliated, and I've got a layer that won't allow our organisms to make a living on my body for a day or two if I do a good job. But I've also done that to my clothing. So your uh, clothes don't stink. They smell like smoke. Now, I personally love that smell especially if I'm using all these, you know, one thing a camera can't do, it can't catch how amazing these things smell. And if I really wanted to smell good, here I would use mostly sagebrush and juniper. So that's sagebrush. I don't have any juniper with me. But you could even use something like green tumbleweeds. Not only could you eat them, mmm as greens when they're fresh and soft but you can make your smudge out of them they don't quite have as many volatile oils but what really makes things smell good is a combination of all these things and why don't you get right over there oh i'm getting a good right here and let's Ooh. hold our shirts together that's another neat trick we can make burn hole in my shorts. Turn your head sideways, that'll get you. You just gotta make sure you're not catching a fire, a flame on so it goes all the way up into your clothing. It's like a chimney. Mm -hmm. I immediately smell better. <laughs> so 
So if I leave my hand down in that strong smoke and that heat, it's actually killing all the organisms on the surface of my hand. And just like those products they sell nowadays, the ones that survive are hiding in deep places like under my fingernails and stuff. But if you didn't have rubber gloves and you didn't have any other choice, you can just keep scrubbing with sand and then smoking and saving that water that you need to drink to survive your ordeal across this barren wasteland you've been trapped in. But all you have is, is a little bit of sagebrush and a way to make a fire, but you've got to use your hands to clean out a wound. You can also, even if the wounded area can be placed over the smoke, you can also clean off the area by smudging or smoking it. But if you do it long enough, your hands will turn yellow. And you'll get what's called uh, smoker's hands. It'll look just like somebody that's been smoking a cigarette too many years in a row. On. Your hands will turn yellowish. And that's a sign that they're very, very clean organically, meaning there's no organisms that can handle that. That's why when you smoke meat, it doesn't rot. And uh, thank you for being part of this ceremony, this uh, cleansing, this smudging, this bath. It's interesting that you can feel like a clammy, oily sensation. You smoke it and it goes away. Yeah. That's why deer hides, when they smoke them, uh, they can't ever get uh, hard again and they, don't, and they don't rot. And you can get them wet. You can get them soaking yeah. wet and they'll never get hard again. But yep. they also don't rot. Like, it's pretty hard to get a, 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 a smoked deer hide to mold and rot. You have to really abuse it and, and maybe wash all the smoke out of it. But if you keep smoking your clothing, you can wash them in the creek and then smoke them again every once in a while and re-soften them and they'll last for a long, long time and not stink. You'll just smell like a mountain man or a mountain girl, mountain gal. Mountain human. Mountain human. So hygiene is important and you can get in trouble if you don't take care of yourself. So taking, taking care to be clean, your teeth and your body can be cleansed out here with available materials if you learn the secrets. They're not secrets, they're just, uh, nobody's trying to hide them, just nobody seems to want to learn them anymore. But thank you for uh, visiting today. <laughs> Forgotten knowledge. Yes, yes.